All right, so I'll be talking about uh, the clause uh, exception clause today in the topic of uh, maritime law for mariners. So this video is uh, only good enough for mariners who are preparing for examinations, their certification examinations or oral examination. Uh, and uh, this will not make you an expert in maritime law or anything like that. All right, so exception clause uh, is included uh, by the charter party to relieve the ship's owner from a liability of loss or damage that may arise from firstly act of God. Uh, so act of God to prove loss from this cause, it must be shown that the accident arose from natural causes, but without any intervention and could not have been prevented by any amount of care and foresight. Uh, natural causes in themselves are not enough. So for example, fog is a natural cause, but if a ship goes around in foggy weather, uh, then that is not an act of God as careful navigation could have prevented it. So basically, if uh, it's foggy weather, if it's restricted visibility, of course, it's an act of God. But if you do not take the precautions uh, in that, if you cannot justify that you were not proceeding on safe speed and that you didn't have both radars on, you had the lookout and all that, if you cannot justify that you didn't take all the precautions, then an accident resulting from the act of God will not be excused. It will only be excused if you have taken all the precautions. For example, if your ship gets damaged in rough weather, uh, and you could have pre uh, avoided that rough weather, you could have uh, altered your ship's course and steered clear of it. Uh, and if you can justify that you were steering well clear of it while keeping in mind the commercial aspects of it, and after that the damage occurred, then of course you can justify this act of God. The other things that are covered in exception clauses are perils of the sea. That refers to accidents of an unforeseeable nature which can happen only at sea. So foundering, standing, uh, foundering, standing of the vessel, springing a leak in heavy weather are examples of the perils of sea. Uh, these, uh, the inevitable action of wind and waves resulting in ordinary wear and tear is excluded. Fire, uh, the owner of the registered ship is given protection by statute against liability for loss caused by fire on board happening without his fault or privity. Then we have the inherent vice or defect of goods that refers to the natural tendency of certain goods to deteriorate on their own. Difficulties often experienced in deciding whether damage to a perishable cargo is due to inherent vice, perils of the sea or want of adequate precautions in storage. Then leakage, breakage, heat, rust and sweat damages occurring due to this are also covered in the exception clause. So these exceptions cover only the damage caused to the goods which themselves suffer leakage breakage etc and damage to other goods stored nearby in any case none of these can be relied upon to give protection when there has been negligence on part of the ship owner or the ship's crew so when we say servants of the ship owner that's basically referring to the ship's crew master officers all included then jettisoning of cargo is also covered in exception clause Jettisoning of cargo covers jettison rendered necessary by a peril of the sea so if you don't know what jettison means that means intentional discharge of the cargo at sea um, also jettison rendered necessary by the neglect of the master or the crew in the navigation of the ship so long as the vessel was initially seaworthy and the goods were not carried in a, may, or in a manner contrary to the terms of the contract of carriage. So it was, if it was necessary to protect the vessel, safety of the crew, safety of the cargo and vessel and because of that jettison was done, that could be an intentional jettison as well, that will be covered in the exception clause as well. All right. Finally, explosions and bursting of boilers, breakage of shafts and latent defects are covered in exception clause as well. So to claim the advantage of this exception, there must be as usual be no negligence on the part of the ship's owner or the ship's crew. Finally, negligence, a typical form of negligence clause within the exceptions clause accepts the ship from liability for loss or damage due to collision, stranding or other accidents arising in the navigation of the vessel even when occasioned by the negligence default or error of the judgment of the pilot, the master mariner or other servants of the ship, owners or persons for whom they may be responsible, not resulting however in case from want of due diligence by the owners of the vessel or by the ship's charters. So if I can simply explain this to you, if you can justify in the court of law or to the maritime lawyers or to the investigators that all precautions were being followed and still the vessel for example collided or went aground or stranded, uh, then uh, you can still claim a negligence uh, A negligence clause will cover you, uh, although a collision should not occur. But if you can justify that all precautions were taken and it was of no fault from the ship's master or their uh, ship's officers or crew and still a collision occurred, then of course the ship is covered 
under the negligence clause which forms part of the exception clause so you can see that there is a general pattern here where of course the perils of the sea and some of the wear and tear breakage leakage all that is covered but in all the cases you have to be able to justify in the court of law that uh, all precautions all necessary measures were put in place they were being followed and that is where the importance of documentation of what you are doing on the ship becomes of paramount importance so no matter what you do you must document it sign it counter sign it by other officers and make sure that tomorrow in an investigation you are able to justify that you did all you could and still the vessel experienced some kind of an accident or incident because of which uh, the vessel or the ship's cargo uh, experienced damages only then you will be uh, protected um, uh, by the exceptions clause which forms part of the agreement of the charter party and the owners all right so i hope this video was useful for you guys uh, let me know uh, what you thought about this video bye for